Hi Barbie Thon, my name is Menace Mans. Um, we are going to be playing some Magic of Pegasus today. I've had this game since I was a kid, so I know it pretty well. Um, and I'm happy to be here um, supporting the Diana Initiative. Keep those donations coming in. We really want to reach $500 today to help out those who need it. So we are going to get started. Um, so this is specifically any percent easy mode. Um, there is uh, some other categories which you can check out on speedrun.com for this game. I think there's about like four categories because you can also get cute costumes in this game if you're willing to do so. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started here. Once I've hit easy mode, we'll start the countdown. Three, two, one, and go. So this game basically is based off of the movie of the same name, Barbie Magic of Pegasus. Um, it doesn't really fit the canon though. Um, like the villain in this game is the same villain as uh, the movie, but obviously in the movie we defeat the villain, so why is he back? Um, it seems a bit weird. Uh, it's like supposed to be post-movie, but also not, so. Anyway, um, this game is made by WayForward, so you'll notice if you were here on Barbiethon Day 1, it looks very similar to the design of uh, Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses on GBA. Um, do you mean to tell me my GBA Barbie game does not have canonical lore? Unfortunately, no. Um, I wish it did, just because I like having games that, like, I don't know, are a sequel but not a sequel or a prequel um that would have been cool um but yeah way forward has put out a lot of cool games for barbie on gba um there's princess and the pauper which uh i don't recommend speed running it's a very long speed run um there's this game magic of pegasus 12 dancing princesses and uh three musketeers all really great games all with their own unique play style as well, even though the art style looks very similar. Um, you'll notice uh, this is also similar to 12 Dancing Princesses in the sense that we will be switching up our power-ups as we go through the levels, but instead of getting our powers from uh, siblings, we are getting them from magical stones for our Wand of Light that we're holding, and the Wand of Light is something that we crafted in the movie, or at least Barbie did. Congratulations, Barbie. Um, so that is what the game is, is that we are freeing people who have been turned to stone by Wenlock, the villain. Um, he is an evil warlock. And um, yeah, and our sister is voluntarily a horse to help us transport us from world to world because there are four worlds in this game. Uh, this palace is technically the first world. Um, and we'll also see some unique ways to use the Wand of Light. So right now, we just got a power-up that lets us fly, like, straight up. So we're able to break through rocks like that. Um, one thing you'll notice is that I am hopping a lot. Um, that is because I'm pretty sure the task of this game shows that hopping is the fast way of movement. So you'll be seeing that I'm doing that constantly. Um, but yeah, this is um, all pretty straightforward. It's a lot of memorization if you want to speedrun this game. All of the uh, statue locations of the people are always in the same place. Um, I just recently created a guide um, that I think is on speedrun.com that tells you where each person is located um, if you just want to start playing this for the first time. Um, in the beginning, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, but when you get into the later levels, a lot of the scenery starts looking pretty samey. So it's kind of hard to remember where everybody is. Um, and then the other thing to point out is at the bottom you can see we're checking off people off our list. Um, there are always eight people in every level. Um, and there's four worlds um, and three different levels on each world. So I think that ends up adding up to almost over a hundred 
different people to memorize their locations. So it can be a lot when you're starting out, so that's why I made the guide. Um, it ends up being over a hundred because of the first like little tutorial level. Now this is something really cool here, is that we actually skipped a person coming into this because you can actually clip through the wall here and reach her from this direction instead of going from the left. So that is what we did there. And then we'll free him. There's someone down below. Um, one thing that's also really nice with the uh, little jumping power-ups is that we don't have to wait for the elevator cycles. We can just skip those entirely. Um, there's only one time that I will have to wait on something on a cycle because I physically can't jump far enough. Um, but everything else, I will be able to use my power-ups to skip cycles, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, um, the difference between easy mode and normal mode, because those are the only two modes we have, um, is that easy mode, you are basically invincible. You can take as many hits as you want, you're never going to die. Normal mode, you actually have a health bar, um, so there is a possibility of death. This is our first boss fight with Wenlock. Um, this boss fight is pretty simple. All we're doing is dropping the chandelier on him, and we'll be using the new power-up we got of jumping uh, high. Um, that's how it works with each world, is we basically utilize the power-up we just got. So he only has three health, um, so it shouldn't take us too long, but we do have to wait for him to be in a specific spot before we drop it down. I try to do it as early as possible. When I was a kid, I always thought the string holding this up looked like taffy because we are not that big. How are we dropping a chandelier? Anyway, this is a weird part of the game where we are showing us going from one world to the next uh, by riding our sister Pegasus, Brietta. Um, and the reward for collecting all the coins and uh, reaching the next world is, as you saw, you get a secret picture, which is really just a low-res screenshot from the movie, which we'll see once we uh, collect 10 coins here. So we'll do this in between every world, and it's always 10 coins. Um, and then we just have to wait for this to end. And we get to see a glorious screenshot from the movie. I hope we don't get copyright striked. Oh my god, look at that. Um, <laughs> so we're moving on to World 2. Uh, this is like a snowy village because this movie and game has uh, like a wintry aesthetic. Um, it takes place kind of like in the winter. Um, so you'll see like the mountains and such back there and snow. Wait for that. The frogs are the same assets as Princess and the Pauper, so if you ever played that game, those should look familiar. And we will be getting our next power-up right here. This will let us go side to side, so we can get over water. And we are just searching for the next person, but yeah. Damage boosting is also pretty common in this game um, when you're doing it in easy mode. And then each mode also has uh, a category for doing the uh, outfit mini games because you might have noticed um, some of the people we save will drop a key um, and that key will unlock a door for a mini game and you earn an outfit, and that's like an all outfits category. Um, but yeah, the mini games are just basically destroying those uh, rock blocks that you see. Um, just you have to do it on a timer. All right. Who cares? We are invincible. Um, um, but yes, uh, the other thing that's important here is the direction that you point your wand with your joystick, um, because you want to be able to hit as many blocks as you can. Um, it's also really nice that you can, um, you know, heal, like, hit people from below, 
um, through the platforms. Um, that's pretty nifty. Um, let's see, I think this is the next guy. Yep. Ah, see, I accidentally picked up the key there. Um, because then it starts dialogue. And we don't want that. But, anyways. There we go. I feel like I missed someone already. I really hope I didn't. But this thing is that, like, this isn't like Mario, where they will tell you, like, oh, you missed someone at this point. Like, you have to keep track of who you've already gotten. I think we're good, though. Yeah, we're good. Alright, we have one more. But yeah, I have the memory of a squirrel, so I also made the guide for myself, even though I've played this so many times. Sometimes the locations just look so similar, I can't remember where people are. Alright, so this is the last level for the town. And then we'll move on to the forest, which is when the game starts to get really interesting. Because this game actually has a glitch in it um, that actually saves, I would say, like 10 minutes of gameplay. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I've been... it's... Uh, sometimes this game can be finicky with the uh, buttons. Um, but yeah, so the glitch can be kind of difficult to perfect. Um, I've been practicing it a lot because I wouldn't say that it's necessarily frame perfect, but it's pretty damn close. Um, if you're either too early or too late, you're not gonna get the glitch to work. So you want to do it as best as possible. For me, I do it based off of a sound cue. Um, so, I'm going to be listening in for that, um, when it comes up. So, let's see, we're almost finished this level. We have one more guy, he's going to be at the very end. Up here. There we go. Alright, and now we're going to be moving on to the forest, and again, we have a boss fight before we do that. This one is interesting because we're going to be fighting the griffin, but we're not really fighting. Um, and we're not going to use the power-up either. Essentially what the griffin does is that he falls down on you, um, but you want him to hit the bridge instead of you. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to stand right here and have him hit the bridge. Okay, good. That was really close. Um, Alright, there we go. So, that could have been done, I think, a little bit faster. Um, I think that can be done in four cycles instead of, I think, I don't know how many there was there, but I think there were five. But you can do that as pretty fast. Um, if you get to the bridge fast enough, but I don't think I was doing that right. But we managed it, it's fine. As long as you finish at the second bridge, but because we don't care about our health, we're not using the side-to-side uh, -side power up. Because essentially what the game wants you to do is like have him hit one bridge, use the side-to-side -to, -side to get over yourself without taking any damage. And then moving on to the next one, but who, who cares about health? Barbie doesn't. Alright, another great screenshot. Alright, forest time. This is where things start to get interesting. Instead of statues, we're going to be introduced to um, what I like to call goblins. Um, they kind of look like ogres from Shrek. Um, and we get a new power-up to cure them. In just a minute. 
Here it is. It's the green stone. And essentially what this does is allows us to cure the goblins and gives us a glitch. I always do that on that tree. Whoops. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so here's our first one. There we go. So basically what that glitch does is instead of giving only credit for one person, it gives me credit for two. So it lets me finish the level like super early because we don't need to go searching for as many people. Oh, I think I needed to move over a little bit more. Yeah, I need to jump here and then move over. And then we need to go up. And then we only need one more person instead of the two that we would have had if we did the level um, normally without the skip glitch. Um, and here's the last person. But as you can see, the level was not over yet. Um, this level, I think, only has goblins. It doesn't have any stone people, um, I'm pretty sure. So... We want to try and hit all of them. There we go, we got one. Thank you, Python, for the donation. Alright. Alright, we got two. This is going pretty good so far. Here's the next one. Alright, got that one. Now we just need one more goblin and then we can complete the level. Which should be this one right here. Ah, oh, goddamn. Sorry. Excuse me. There we go. So we finished the level twice as fast because we only had to do four goblins instead of eight. And this is going to be the last level that we can actually utilize that glitch. Um, ooh, I don't know why I didn't hit the branch there. Um, basically, um, you could technically still get the glitch in the ice level that we're about to go into. Um, but it's very difficult, and I haven't known anyone to hit it consistently. Um, so that's the only problem with that. Um, it's just, the way that this works is because the newest power-up we got is right next to the first power-up, the default. So you're able to switch from one to the other very quickly, and then once we get the last power up, they won't be next to each other anymore, which um, prevents us from doing what we need to do. And so we only need one more, and then we'll be done. And I hear him. That's one good thing with the goblins, is that if you don't remember where they are, you can definitely hear them. Ah, oh. there we go. <laughs> I didn't mean to jump there. So that's the end of forest. Um, now we have the boss, and then we'll be moving on to ice. But we did some pretty good skips there. I messed up, you know, that one jump, but at least as long as we got all the glitches, I don't know if that was a prediction or not, if I was going to hit all the glitches, but I did. So I don't know if there was any predictions for this run. So this one is, again, we're utilizing the power up we just got. Um, we just make him trip over some wood that he throws the griffins at us. We turn him into wood, he trips over them. 
And this is actually, like, I think canonically an ogre in the movie, and he tries to eat us. Um, but we were brave, and we prevented him from eating us. But I do think his graphics are really good in this game. I think his name is Ollie the Ogre. Oh wow, that's the first time I never took damage on that part. That was pretty good. So if I was in normal mode, that would have been sick. Alright, last one. Alright, we're good. Moving on to the last world, um, which is going to be all ice. And I think this might be our last surprise picture. I don't think we do one in between the final boss and the final world because you'll see on the map that there's one more location after the ice world but it's really just the final boss's lair and we have like the final boss fight all right got some coins and that's 10 so now we just chill wait for that special picture to come up beautiful this is actually one of the better looking ones actually all right ice world who cares what they're saying so ice world in my opinion is the hardest part of this game um because they do psych you out um Basically, the final power-up we're gonna get right here is going to be melt, so we get to melt things. Um, but as you can see, like, we're already having to backtrack to get to our first person, um, which is really inconvenient. And there's also ice physics, which makes this very annoying and difficult to do. Um, Alright, that's good. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I know where the next person is and we're gonna come up here. Gotta set this up. The next person is hidden. They're hidden in blocks of ice. And what this game does is they will put out blocks of ice with nothing in it uh, to psych you out. So you're unfreezing things. So that was like the hardest part for me is memorizing which blocks of ice actually had people in it and which ones didn't because all of this area just looks the same. Um, let me see if I can hit this. Uh, oh. No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna do it the long way. I couldn't. Usually what you can do is while you're sliding on the ice, you can uh, reach up there, but it's uh, really finicky and sometimes the buttons won't let you. Uh, so here's one. Hopping along. We have one up here. And they're so deep into the ice as well. Like, I don't know how these people lived. They... But, um... Whoops. Yeah, you will see, um... That there will be... Goblins... Uh, in this world, but we won't be able to do the goblin glitch. I have not found a way to make it work. Um, so here's an example. That block of ice doesn't have anything in it. The last person is up here. Which, little jump, finicky jump there. There we go. And then moving on to here. Ice physics can be cool if it helps you, but uh, most of the time this game uh, is really tricky you with the uh, ice physics. Alright, I'm gonna jump over that. The next person is gonna be over here. And then we just hop along. And the one is going to be over here on the left. 
And then we have one over here on the right. Ah, yes, that's fine. And then we will encounter our first goblin down here. But again, no goblin glitch. Uh, but yeah, there's a water part here, which we can do that. And then we want to get to here. Oh yeah, there's the geyser. That's another thing, is that up there, there's like another block of ice. They make you think maybe you can use that like geyser to like jump. No, it doesn't do anything. Totally pointless. Makes you think you can reach something that you actually can't. Alright, and then we just have the last one. Ah, okay, that wasn't that one. Oh yeah, they're up here. Duh. Alright, and then we're in the last level of Ice World. There's a woman hidden up here. And then... Aha, uh -huh, yeah, the second woman is in here. We'll move along this way. Welcome to Barbiethon Gamers. Uh, this one, we can do that, and then we have goblins, and then we gotta defrost that, there's nothing up there, we can do that, this is the one that we need to actually jump on to make it over to the other side, because otherwise we can't. All right, and then we're down to the final four, which is pretty easy. But this one is pretty inconvenient because there is no way to access him other than going like all the way to the right, like doing all this backtracking. It's very annoying. Because as you can see, he's in this corner here. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. And then we have a little girl at the place where we just were, but she's over on the right side. So we'll just skate along here. One thing I'm surprised is that um, in the movie, like the whole part of Annika, aka Barbie's personality, was ice skating, and we don't have any ice skating levels in this game. Um, but yeah, the last two are gonna be goblins. Um, but, so I'll get that prepped. Um, but yeah, I'm really disappointed. No ice skating levels for Barbie, you know? That would have made this game even cooler, I think, as like a mode of transportation. There we go. Were these people hiking in the frozen mountains when they got cursed? Mm. Possibly. I'm not gonna judge. So yeah, this one is basically- this like boss fight is kind of like an Indiana Jones situation where we're trying to outrun the giant snowball. Um, but, you know, we can't really control our speed. We're going as fast as the ice ramps will allow. Um, just have to make sure not to mess up. This is when the directional use of the wand comes in handy because you want to hit as many of the ice blocks as you can so that you can get as far ahead of the snowball as you can. And then once we finish this, then we'll move on to the final boss fight. And time will be when we hit the credits. Because the boss fight only has two stages. And this is the end of the snowball fight, quote unquote. Alright, final boss. And his lair. Lenny Lock. 
So basically, uh, the stages are very much the same. Uh, well, this first stage is the same as the first boss fight, except now we have two chandeliers. Um, and then the second phase is he's turning himself into stone, and we're freeing him. So let's... We have to wait for him to walk over. There we go. Alright, and now we switch back to the normal mode, default, and this is RNG, um, which one he appears in, um, I think, um, you could possibly do the goblin glitch here, I think Pinky might have figured that out, but I haven't been able to figure out that yet. Alright, alright. There we go, that's the end of the boss fight. He's dead. We're down for the count. And time is about to happen. Right when we hit the credits. And time! That was Barbie Magic of Pegasus. Um, yeah, that was PB. Um, that's actually five minutes slower than I think my PB. So, hooray! Um, I really just wanted to get top five in this game, and I think I was able to do that today, and I'm happy to have showcased that for uh, Barbiethon. Um, and next, I will be playing another game. Um, I might have meant faster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I will be playing another game. It is a Barbie spin-off game. If you know her little sister as Chelsea, Kelly, Shelly, whatever you know her as, we're going to the Kelly Club Pet Parade. So stay tuned for that. We'll be right back after we get that set up.